Hello, here we are again. Okay, today it may be a little bit longer than usual. God is just so awesome. He just really is. And we have to make sure that we obey him. And this is what it is. Just we're coming from Jeremiah 7. However, it's taking me a different route. And those who really, really want to know the will of God and want to do his will, when you make up in your mind to do so, I'm telling you, he will give you such revelation. He will use you mightily. He will give you such joy in his word that you can't help but want to share it with other people. Even if, even if it means that you may be persecuted, but it's okay. Because Peter and his apostles said in Acts 5, 29, he said, we must obey God, okay, rather than man. So for me, with this and anything that I do in my life, I'd rather be out with you than with God. So with that being said, we're going on to the lesson because it's going to be a little difficult. Because the subject that we're going to talk about, churches are not talking about it anymore because it's so rampant in the church. It's everywhere. And it's in our faces. And yes, we live in a world. We're not of the world. We're, we're living in the world. We're not of the world. Those who are Christians, those who claim to be Christians, who are sold out for Christ, who understand and obey his word, and are walking in his way and the Lord's will. So last week I spoke a little about homosexuality and how it has affected the entire world, okay? But not only that, again, we're not talking about it. Us Christians who clearly in the Bible, it says that God has an abomination towards homosexuality. Oh yeah, I'm going to lose some people. I don't care, okay? Because I am going to be very firm, straightforward in teaching this. Because the word of God is true. It will not return back void. I keep saying that. Let every man be a liar and God be the truth. His word is true. And if you don't believe me, Test it out for yourself because I would not be teaching this had I not known my life before and where it is now and what God has done in it time after time. Oh, yes, I choose God every day. I choose my Jesus Christ, who is my savior, over anybody, family included. Okay. So that being said, we're going to talk about disobedience because that's leading into what God has shown me. Okay. And not only that, let me just say this. God is so awesome. He will confirm what he wants you to do for him. See, that's the thing. Listen out carefully, but then look for the, the clues, the, the, the voice of God and what he's telling you to do. And you better be obedient. I'm telling you. See, the thing is, we think that if we can't do it, it won't get done. Well, God said, okay, well, that person didn't do it. And I told them to. So don't worry. I'm, my message is coming through. I'll just use someone else. So for me, I said, Lord, if you can use anybody, use me. Because there were times when I had the opportunity to be used and I didn't. I refused. I disobeyed. And then later on, I saw down the road, well, that person is doing the same thing that I was supposed to do. That's because I didn't obey and I paid the consequences. So now in my life, or when I hear the voice of God, oh, I obey. And you should too. So what he gave me, and this is kind of a long introduction, but it's okay. Just hold on. Just stay with me, okay? What he told me last week, what I talked about as far as homosexuality and it's not being taught in the church or not, not being taught, but not being spoken about against in the church. Let me make that very clear. We're not teaching it. We're speaking up against it, speaking out against it, because it is an abomination to God. Leviticus, 
Okay. Leviticus chapter 20. And it says, verse 13, if a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed and what? Abomination. Now let's get the definition of abomination. Abomination is a thing that causes disgust or hatred, obscenity, cruelty, an atrocity, a disgrace, a violation. Anything that is vile or vicious is an abomination. So that's an abomination to God. That's what he says in his word. Okay. Here's the thing. Disobedience will bring about so much heartache in your life, even to the point of death. That's why it will go so well for you. And, and the Bible clearly tells us, train up a child in the way that it should go. And when he's older, he will not depart. We should train the kids up as early as they can to understand the word of God. And no, people are not wanting to know the word of God these days. They're turning a blind ear to it. But those who have been sold out, those who know the Lord, those who have experienced his goodness, but also have experienced his wrath, we know. We know that it is better to be obedient to God than to disobey God. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting into the word. Oh, yeah, I promise you. The word is coming. I just have to, like the Lord said, prepare, prepare you for this because it is harsh to some. Now to others who understand the word of God, who are sold out Christians, oh, it's like, oh yeah, well, she's speaking truth. And it's not my truth. It is the Lord's truth. It is his word. It is his word that we stand on if we are Christians. Okay. And the thing about that is that we have people in our family who are homosexuals and uh, lesbians, uh, LGBTQ, all, look, it's not that we don't love them. Just like God, he hates the sin. He loves the person, but he hates the sin. And it's an abomination. There's a big difference. See, when he says abomination, that's, that's, that's way past, okay, I'm, I'm disappointed. You know, um, I hate it. And it is, it's a hatred, but an abomination is just like, Really, I'm sick of it now. I'm, 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 I'm up to here, and something has to be done because you don't understand my grace and my mercy. I've given you all of that to get it right because you can get it right in my word. You are not born that way. See, people will tell you that because in Jeremiah chapter seven it says, "Trusting in lying words." <laughs> That's what this pericope is. Jeremiah chapter seven, trusting in lying words. And that's what they are. People will sell you a lie because the enemy wants you to believe that lie, that you were born that way. No, in the enemy, the spirit, something that you open a portal with, and that's another thing too. We don't talk about that either. The spiritual realm, the really spiritual realm where people open up themselves to different demonic spirits. That's another lesson, Lord. Okay, I hear you. But let me stick to this one from last week, coming into this week, because he was dealing with me all week long. And not only that, like I said, he gives me different things that will say, my daughter, you're on the right track. You heard me well. You heard me. And you must obey. And I am. Now, during that time, only a week has passed. And three people have talked about homosexuality. And in general, one in particular, my, my good, wonderful assistant, Al, he's in the Philippines. And he asked me, he said, Lynette, because he knew about my sermon last week, my message, because he's the one that beautiful. He, he does all of my thumbnails for my YouTubes. He does wonderful work. Thank you, Jesus, for him. Thank you, Lord. He asked me, what is your stance on that? I said, absolutely. I am with the Lord. I stand on the Lord's side. Whose side are you on? Because the Lord says it's an abomination. And I agree. And he says, I wholly agree as well. So it was three people besides him that talked about this. And then here we go today. This is a real confirmation. 
after I do my devotions, I put up, you know, different sayings on my YouTube. And well, what did I run across? And it wasn't by happenstance because I don't believe in that. I believe God was saying, okay, now is the day that you have to address this. On YouTube, it was Kevin Hart and Don Lemon. And it says, the uh, title is, he committed the unforgivable sin. And they were talking about Kevin Hart and Don Lemon was just bashing him really by saying, why did you say what you said, Tom, you know, whatever about the gay community and homosexuality and about him telling his son it's wrong, which it is, he believes that. And so he's telling people, look, you're not going to force me into an apology or saying that uh, I believe in homosexuality. I support the LGBT community. He said, I apologize if I offended you. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you offended somebody, then you go to them. You go to them and you say, I am sorry. You apologize. Repent. So if he offended somebody, he did exactly what the Bible told him to do. However, he does not have to sign off on what he does not believe. And that's what it seemed like Don Lemon was trying to make him to do. And it's constant on the, on the TV, everywhere. It was him asking, you know, why did you do this, Kevin Harden? And I said, look, I'm not going to apologize anymore. I said what I said, but I believe what I believe. And that's it. And that's where we should stand as Christians. Do not let anybody bully you into believing something that you don't. That making you feel bad about something that it is your conviction. So here, yes, I may lose some people who have subscribed to me. It's okay because I understand fully that I am on the Lord's side. Make no mistake about that. I believe his word. So we're going to get into this, okay? I'm excited about it because it's the word of God and, and the word of God excites me. So again, I'd rather be out with you than with God any day. So let's begin. About the obedience first, okay? And it says, Jeremiah, I'm going to start at chapter, it was chapter seven, but we're going to start at uh, chapter, verse 23. Now, please read chapter, the whole chapter of seven, okay? It says, but this is what I commanded them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and you will be my people. And walk in all the ways that I've commanded you that it will go well with you. See, when we do God's will, I'm telling you, it will go well with us. He will protect us. We will have, look, we'll have power, provision, protection. All of those things, the Lord is, he will be with us. That's what he does for his people. I know, I can speak on that. Because he has done it time and time again. I Just last week, I saw the, the enemy coming. I saw the danger. And he said, Lynette, uh-uh, stand still. Don't go anywhere. Sit right in your car. Do not move until I tell you. And he showed me the whole picture of what was going to take place. See, <laughs> that's why I said, what good father wouldn't take good care of his children, wouldn't protect them, wouldn't provide for them. Mine does. His name is the Father God. And then Jesus Christ is my Savior. He's the one that keeps me, that he's making intercessions on my behalf every single moment of the day. That I do believe. And then I also believe that the Holy Spirit guides me and tells me what to do, tell me how to do it. Not that I'm some kind of robot, because I can reject what I hear from the Lord. But because he loves me so much, because he cares for me so much, he warns me, he tells me, he guides me into what? All truths. All, not some, but every single truth. Now, it is up to me to obey and believe it. If I don't, it's not his fault. It's me because he said, I, I make the decisions. God has given us a, a mind, a brain, emotions everything to equip us to get through this life, this journey called life. 
And because I have the Holy Spirit, because I gave my life to Christ years ago, now the Holy Spirit is guiding and directing my path. Well, guess what? <laughs> my path is good now, where before it wasn't. I was on that other path leading to destruction and death. I'm certain of it, absolutely certain of it. But because I made a choice and it is a choice and you will have that choice. That choice is to give your life to Jesus Christ. I'm not gonna wait until the end of this message. I'm gonna say to you now, if you want a life eternally, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for our sins, that the Father God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Those who believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Who wouldn't want to reign with Jesus and the Lord, Father God, and, and the Holy Spirit for eternity? That this life is nothing compared. And if you have a great life, if you have this all of the wonderful so-called trappings of this life, the, the big house and the material great thing. It's nothing compared to what the Lord Almighty has for us in heaven. But there's a choice. There is a choice that we believe on the Lord or you don't. See, that's the thing. That's the beauty of what God has done for his, for humanity. He's giving us choices. He's given us choices to make. He says, either you believe or you don't. Either you believe that Jesus is the son of God or you don't. But this is the thing. At the end, somebody's wrong, right? It's the one who does believe and the one who doesn't believe, somebody's going to be wrong, right? But for me, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he came and died for our sins. And now he, once he died, he rose again because that's what he kept telling them. He kept telling the disciples, I'm going to come back and I'm going to reign side by side with my father. It's in his word. And you don't have to believe his word, but I do. Because, see, I know the difference in not believing and believing. See, I've had those other religions <laughs> really when I went off to college. You know, that's why it's so important that parents keep covering your children with prayer. Keep praying for them. Because when they go off to college, there's a whole lot of stuff happening. There's a whole lot of demonic activity that, that people fall into. And sometimes they don't come out. Thank God I did. Because I had a praying mother, praying father, praying. Everybody was praying for me up in New York. I'm thankful for that because I could have died up there. There are several, several times that I could have lost my life, but God spared them. I can see them. And sometimes it brings tears to my eyes because I know that he covered me. He protected me. That's why I'm so passionate about it because I want you, those who are listening, I want you to understand that there's this wonderful God, same as Jesus Christ, the Father God, the Holy Spirit, that looks out for us, that cares for us. There's no one, nothing can compare, but <laughs> cannot compare. So, and it says, so uh, we're talking about obedience. We're still, I'm, I'm, I'm still in obedience, okay? Thank you, Lord. It says 23. No, 20, let's say 24. Okay. Yet they did not obey or incline their ears, but followed what the counsels of the dictates of their evil hearts and went backwards and not forward. That's what this generation is doing now. You see it every day. They're going backwards. They're not going forward as far as uh, the life of, of God, Jesus Christ. They're not wanting to seek his word. They're wanting to have idols, celebrities as their idols, their gods. What a tragedy. They're humans. Who created them? Who created the celebrities? Who created Beyonce and, and Jay-Z and all? Who created them? 
the Lord God, but they chose, and it's a choice. Everybody has a choice to worship who they want to. But in the end, like I said, somebody's going to be wrong. Mm. Then it says 25, verse 25, since the day that your father came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent to you, listen to this, my, my servants of prophets daily rising up and sending them to you. That's what the Lord does now. Every single day, just like me. He sends people like me. There's people all over the internet that are talking about the goodness of Jesus Christ, that they're also warning you, like I am, about the danger of living a life outside of the protection of Jesus Christ. Again, it's a choice and we all have choices, but I always say the choices you make today will affect your tomorrow and not only your tomorrow, but those who you love. Remember that. Then it says, yet they did not obey me or climb my ears, but stiffened their necks. They did worse than their fathers. So this generation is getting worse and worse, but that's what the Bible speaks of. You know, we are in a, a, a time where, yes, we do have to make serious choices about our lives and the lives of those who we love and care for. Not only who we love and care for, but if you love people, then you will want their lives to be better. You will want them to, to know the Lord, to get to know him. That's salvation. And that's why I want so many people to understand the way I was before and where I am now. I can tell you, it was nobody but the Lord, nobody but Jesus Christ who got me to this point because my life was a wreck. It really was. And not too many people know it, but it was. And I'm going to tell one of these days, write a book or whatever, you know, but whatever it is, I'm telling you right now, couldn't be any worse than yours. Really. My life was a wreck. And I tried every single thing possible until someone told me about the goodness of Jesus Christ, who gave me a word, Bible, and I got in it because, you know, when you get into situations that you can't get out of, that you, you know that you can't yourself get out of, you're desperate. You're like, okay, let me try something. Let me try anything, <laughs> anything. And that anything was after everything else, it was the word of God. And once I started reading the word of God, something in me just, it just stirred. I was like, wow. Let me read some more. Let me know some more. And then the more I read, they invited me to church and, and Bible study and getting more into the word and getting to, see, that's when that relationship comes in because then you can go and say, Lord, I want a relationship with you. And he's wanting, willing, just elated that you make that decision. And I'm so thankful. Like I said, again, I get a little teary-eyed. Because I'm so thankful that I made that decision and it was my decision to make, just like it will be your decision to make. It's up to you. Like I said, God is so awesome. He doesn't force us to do anything. He says, either you are for me or you're against me. Either you love me or you hate me because there are no in-betweens. That's how he operates. And how wonderful is that? Then he says, therefore, you shall speak all these words to them, Jeremiah, but they will not obey you still, okay? You shall also call to them, but they won't answer you. He said, they're stiff neck. They, whatever, even here, even now, I'm talking to you and you probably will turn me off because you don't like what I'm saying. You don't agree with it. It's okay. I'm here to be the messenger. But do I believe the message? Yes, or else I wouldn't be teaching it. I'm not going to teach anything that I don't believe in. So yes, I am the messenger used by God, but I also believe the message. Understand that. And then it says, okay, judgment on obscene religion. Okay, 
<laughs> this is it right here. It says, so you shall say to them, this is a nation that does not obey the voice of the Lord, their God, nor receive what? Correction. They don't want to, what did I just say? You don't want to see, correct, receive correction. You don't want to hear what does say the Lord. You don't want to obey that because your life is, to you, is comfortable. The sin that I'm sitting in, oh, it's good to me right now. I don't want to hear what you're saying because I don't believe you. And you know what? Sad part about it is some of you really do believe it, but you just choose to say, okay, I believe it, but I'm still do my thing because it feels good to me. It is good to me. But after a while, you will see. The Lord, at some point, he's so merciful and he's so kind and he's so patient. But at some point, that time will run out for you. I do know that for sure. And it says, truth has perished and has been cut off from your mouth. So again, see, okay, truth has perished. You no longer believe in the truth. You would rather believe a lie. You would rather believe that God has signed off on sin, homosexuality, where he clearly says in his word, because if you read it, you would understand that. But see, you taking somebody else's word for it. You don't even know the word. So you say, no, God is a loving God. Absolutely. He is a loving God. He loves every, no, he loves those who are obeying his will. Okay. But the thing about it is he does have mercy on those who are out of his will. I was out of his will, but he had so much patience and kindness and mercy towards people, his creations, that he says, get it right. Come on, get it right, Lynette. Come on into the family before it's too late. Before it's too late. And there's somebody out there. Before it's too late, you got pricked right here in your heart. When I said before it's too late, there's something that stirred in you that was uncomfortable now. It's uncomfortable. And that's the Lord telling you, get it right now before it's too late. And you know something is down there. You feel it. You know that that sin that you're sitting with, not just homosexuality, I'm talking about just sin and period. Now, everybody sins, really, we do. But there's repentance and we can't keep doing it over and over again. I've said that time and time again. But there's somebody who's really sitting on something that is really eating them up, is, is, is damaging them. You thinking about it, you know that it's wrong, but you keep doing it. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can get your deliverance. Today is the day that you can say, Lord, I repent. Please forgive me. Let me come to you and come as just as you are. You don't have to try to build yourself up, make yourself look good. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to make up. You just come as you are because God says, I accept, I, look, he created you. So he knows how you look when nobody else does. Behind closed doors, he already knows. He sees and knows everything. So he says, come to me as you are. Repentant, broken. If you're broken, just even if you're not, but you hear this word and you know that because it's not me. It is the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit that is stirring in you something that is uncomfortable. That sin that you've been dwelling with for a while, it's uncomfortable. You may be someone who is with someone in adultery. You know that that's not your husband. You know that's not your wife, but you're still in it because it feels good, okay? It doesn't feel good now and it won't feel good. You heard this as of this moment. It won't be like it was before because you heard the word of God. And see, the word of God will break up, till up some stuff in your, in your heart, break the ground, let you know no more. That that you used to be doing, uh, 
It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen anymore. You're not going to feel the same way. I don't know who I'm speaking to. This is the Lord, okay? This is not Lynette. But whoever it is, your heart got pricked. Okay, Lord, thank you. So then it says, cut off your hair and cast it away and take a lamentation on the desolate heights. So here's, here's what's coming down the road for those who are in disobedience to the Lord. Your life will become desolate. It may look good now, but there's a time that's coming. If you don't get it right, the desolation is coming. What is desolation? Nothing. You lose it all. Oh, hold on. Let me tell you something. I know because I did. I lost it all. Thank God that I got it right with him. And now he's building me back up. And here we go, a little teary out again. Because I know what he can do for those who have fallen, for those who have sinned, for those who he said, Lynette, you have a, a work for me. You have a destiny to get to. I have a calling on your life. Take heed to it. And I did it for a while. And I lost everything, but I thank God. He said, what did, what did he say? He will restore the years that the pomegranate and the canker worm, <laughs> yeah. And he is doing just that because he is a God of truth. And he will keep his promises. Then it says, verse 30, for the children, oh no, his, okay, for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath, 30. For the children of Judah has done evil in my sight, said the Lord. And they have said there, what? Here we go again. Abominations in the house, which is called by my name to pollute it. We're going to stop right here. This is the stop sign. This is the one that he told me to really address because it's in the church and we turn a blind eye. Homosexuality is running rampant in the church, that spirit that, and it's so blatant. See, Satan, he's not subtle anymore with it. He's coming out just like every, coming out, coming out of the closet. They used to hide it. Oh no, it's not. Mm -mm. I'm gonna put it in your face. I'm gonna be in your face so close that you can smell it, that stench, because that's what it is. It's, it's an abomination to God. And it's a, if it's an abomination to God, it should be an abomination to you. If you are a Christian, if you are Christ-like, if you are following the word of God and you say you are a Christian, then it should be an abomination to you. So whenever you see it, you shouldn't just turn your eye or your head or your eyes or your, your back to it. You should address it, but with love, absolutely with love. But you cannot allow it to continue. And them just, this is who I am. Accept me for who I am. Well, no, we don't have to accept you for who you are. Because you are not living according to the word of God. So no, I don't have to accept your behavior. No, I won't. Mm -mm. I won't. I love you, but I'm going to tell you your stuff stinks. It stinks. And you should not hold. This is the sad part too. Now I'm going to address this and yeah, I'm going to really get some mm, out of this again. I'd rather be with God and obeying him than out with you, bottom line. So here we go in the church. You have people in the church in positions that they are, they don't care that you know how, if they're a male feminine, they act up on the pulpit or how manly they are, woman dressing as men. 
Now, let me address this too, because yeah, that's that's a that's a mm, help me, Holy Spirit. If you are a, and I think, and a, please forgive me if I mispronounce the word familiar. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I'm, I, I'm, I forgot the person's name of it, but if you are a person that is born with two parts, and we're going to address this, a male and a genital, a male part and a female part, okay? We're not talking about them. We're talking about a male that has been born a male with the male part and a female that has been born female with the female part, okay? Thank you, Lord. Mm. And you have chosen, because it's a choice, it is a choice, but it's a spirit though, it's a spirit. So yes, it's a choice, but it's a spirit that has gotten to the point where you have allowed that spirit to come into you again, somehow, some way, the portals. We're going to talk about that. Thank you, Lord. This is, I knew this was going to be controversial, but it's okay. Cause yeah, Jesus was controversial. Okay. So if you are in a position in the church and you are acting as a male, but you're actually female, or you're a male in the church in a position, because that's what we're talking about, the church, but you are dressing as a female or have the characteristics or the gestures of a female, and the female has the gestures of the male, that's an abomination to God. So it says right here, did I, did I not read it right? It says, for the children of Judah, us, okay, have done evil in my sight, says the Lord, and they have set their abomination in the house, the church, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And those who are in authority are allowing the pollution to come right through. So it's a stench in the atmosphere. And then you wonder why people can't be healed, delivered, and set free in the church. You're wondering why the spirit of the Lord has left the church. You're wondering why the children are no longer like they used to be, obedient. Why? Because you have allowed an abomination to come into the church. So therefore, the spirit of the Lord has left that church. Now you can say what you want, but those who understand, who know the voice of God, who can discern what's going on, they see it. I don't care how many members you have. The spirit of the Lord has left your house, and you better get it back before what is too late. You better address, address what the Lord is telling you right now. This is no coincidence that you're looking at this, that you're hearing my voice, because it is not me. It is the voice of the Lord warning you, you preachers and apostles and teachers and, and those who are in authority, that you know the word of God, that you teach the word of God, but you allow this, and I'm gonna read it one more time, to go on in who, not your house, that church is not yours, it's the Lord's house. And it says, for the children of Judah, you, all of us Christians have done evil in who, my sight, in the Lord's sight, in plain sight, you're doing it. Then he says, and they have set their abomination. They have set it. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. They set it, meaning it's sitting there. It's not running here and there and then going out. They set it there. It's permanently there now. Oh. Mm. Their abomination in the house, which is 
call by my name to pollute it. There's somebody, several, who are listening to this message. I don't care if you get mad at me because I'm not it. <laughs> I don't care. I'm telling you what does say the Lord. That's up to you. Because again, the choices that you make today will affect your tomorrow. And not only you, but your church members, your family, your friends, especially those who are in authority. God will hold you accountable. Hmm. So let's go down to verse 33. Because I want you to read the whole chapter seven. It says the the here we go. This is the result of it. The corpses of this people will be food for the birds of the heavens and for the beasts of the earth. Mm. And no one will be frightened, and no one will frighten them away. Then I will cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of myrrh, the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegrooms, the voice of the bride, for the land will be desolate. So there will be no more singing, no more joy, no more dancing. And even, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm going there. Even if your church has this wonderful choir of 50 people or 10 people, okay? And you notice that the anointing on that choir has left, that's because the spirit of the Lord has left that house. It used to be anointed. People used to be stirred and cry when they hear songs. This says right here, what? Mm -mm. It says the voice of myrrh and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom, all that. That's joy. That's unspeakable joy. So when you hear the songs of, of worship, you feel, you feel it. It's, it's, I used to cry when I hear, would hear music. And I'm in church and I'm just like, Lord, this is, this is so serene and peaceful because that's what, that's what worship will do. But if you don't see people doing that anymore, if you are not affected yourself like you used to be with the praise and worship, that's a good indication that the Lord's spirit has left the room. And look, When the Lord's spirit leaves the room, you better leave too. Because there's nothing else there. It's a dry and it's going to be desolate after a while if you don't get it right. <laughs> I don't know what this is, Lord. You just gave it to me. I addressed everything that you told me to. There was one more and that's in Genesis. So you don't believe me. Genesis it talks about homosexuality. Genesis where Lot is 19 verses one and then verses five and eight. Read that as well. Because there were two angels that came. That's why it's called Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember what happened to them? Gone, desolate, fire, brimstone, everything gone. Because of what? Homosexuality. It says the two angels came to visit Lot's house. And they came in because Lot told them, look, come on, you know, don't, don't stay out here. Come on, go in there. See, Lot knew what he was dealing with. So he says, come on. He didn't know they were angels. Perhaps, well, let's, let's go on. So Lot invited him into his house. And then here we come. A little while later, the men of the city, it didn't say women, the men of the city. <laughs> the men of the city came knocking on Lot's door saying, where are the two men? They came to visit you. We bring them out. Cause what? Mm, here it is right here. Whew, this is something, y'all. He says, because we want to do, it says, and they called to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. Carnally. So we may rape them. That's what the bottom line is. And this is what Lot says. So Lot went out to them through the door and shut the door behind him and said, look, please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. And now, okay, this is where the generation even now, so it was back in Lot's days, is here now. 
where people will sell their family out for whatever they need, no matter what. So look at what Lot did. Look at what he was willing to do. See now, he says, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you. And you, listen to this, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. Can you believe that? Yeah, you should, because it, it's, it's even happening today. Parents are selling their children off for sexual favors or whatever for money. Well, look what Lot was going to do for his daughters. Whew. Wicked generation. Back then, it's no different now. But again, it is up to you. You've listened to everything, and I've been obedient to the Lord. Everything that he's given me, I have given to you. So this is not Lynette. This is the Lord. So you take it up with him. But I will tell you this. The decisions you make today will definitely affect your tomorrow. And I pray that you don't wait until tomorrow to, to make the decision to give your life to Christ. I know that it was the best decision that I made. And there's no turning back. Have a good day.